In the section that we're going to go into now, we're going to quickly look at just some of what we see as the most common pitfalls for bidding. We're not going to spend too much time uh, looking at this, but because after we've quickly unpacked this lot, we will move on to the ideas and actions that will help us overcome some of these challenges. So first up, from a bid perspective, um, and, and it's the big one, it's, it's, a fa it's failure to engage early. And failing to pull this off is, is the biggest trick we can miss. We can see there from, from this particular statistic, 97% of tenders uh, of tenders already have a partner in mind by, they by the time they come to market. So if we are coming to the table cold and very little proactive engagement, the client's naturally going to gravitate towards a business who successfully established their authority and credibility leading up to the bid. I'll jump into the next one, which is um, weak or insistent or inconsistent bid or no bid decision making processes. Um, and whilst many, many businesses have a sort of a go, no go call or a bid, no bid matrix tool or even a SWOT analysis, um, many of the organizations we work with still lack the intelligence on the client, the incumbent, the competition or the price point to make a really well informed view on should this be something that they make an investment in? Because every, like everyone on this call knows this, right? Putting these things together takes an enormous amount of effort, enormous amount of resource. And, and quite frankly, um, it's a distraction across the business. There's, there's, a, there's an opportunity cost assigned to this as well. The next one over here we've got is complexity. 77% uh, of the buyers saying that their last purchase was complex. The bid reader wants to be taken on a journey. They want to be able to find the points thereafter. And too often we find bidders placing too much detail and complexity in the response. That means their overarching message is lost. We need to make it easy for the customer. They're often looking at five, maybe more suppliers. And all those suppliers are trying to bend the RFP to their particular strengths. It's complex and difficult. So it's absolutely critical. You take the time to read the requirements and stop and ensure that you're answering the question and guiding the customer through your response. Um, and we'll come on some of the tactics that we can deploy to help do that shortly. On to the fourth one. I mentioned earlier that price alone was not enough to, to win a bid, uh, and nor is just answering the tender with the sort of black and white speeds and feeds response. If you base your response on functional solutions and you consider that any bidder can deliver the required solution, otherwise they wouldn't be in the running in the first place, um, then an approach like this fails at the outset because it fails to, to really clearly express exactly what your competitive advantage. Um, and it's our job collectively to understand and deliver the human outcomes and the value that we're proposing as part of this bid. Um, and this is where we really, really can set ourselves apart from the competition and create, start to begin to create some clear space. In five, we've got a poor visual identity. Um, and it's, this keeps coming back to the, the, the story that we're trying to tell that we want the buyer to understand is this, we are, we are totally committed to this being about them. Uh, and we think that strong visual identity is important, both in terms of, of signposting, coming back to the point we made earlier about making sure that the reader can get to the bits that matter to them. Um, but also it's, uh, it's ensuring that, that we look professional in all that we do. If we deliver a sloppy proposal, what's the actual project going to run like? Uh, but it's also a chance to show your connection with, with the business, with their brand. Um, and, and just to be clear, I'm not advocating trying to ape another business's identity. That way is fraught with danger. But it is possible to deliver powerful visual cues to demonstrate a clear connection with their brand, their values, um, without throwing away your own. And, and again, we'll come back later on to some working examples of, of how you can approach that and what good looks like. And finally, from a pitfalls perspective, um, it's it's the last is the last stage in the journey, um, and we always talk about it being the sharp point of the spear. But quite often, it, it can be the bit that gets it can be the bit that gets forgotten. Um, I mean, the stat that we're making there is that that any purchase we're only getting as salespeople we're only getting seventy percent of the time to make the purchase face to face with potential suppliers. So we've yeah. got to make that count and. No, yeah. almost every bid, every single bid that we work on will require the shortlist to present in person. And it's a, before we begin working on that stage, we, you know, we always ask our clients, why do you think that is? They've got everything they need to know from you written into your proposal. Why is it they want you to sit in a room with them and talk them through it? And it's about, it comes back to the point, again, we said earlier, it's about the thing that makes the difference. It's about trust 
and human connection. Um, so please don't make the mistake of just thinking the presentation is just the fluff on top, because we regu I mean, regularly see what has been thought to be a, a nailed on decision about award completely reversed by a strong performance in the room, because it's a platform that enables us to really bring our competitive position to life and tell the stories that the RFP structure squeezes out of our written response.